Welcome back to Uncle Danny Cooks. Today we're going to work on pot stickers. So uh, we are going to start first of all getting all of our ingredients ready. Now you're going to need ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey, ground pork, whatever you want. Use. I use ground beef. You're going to need uh, shredded cabbage. I use a coleslaw mixture. Garlic and ginger. I have pre-peeled garlic just for simplicity's sake. Ginger, we're going to peel and cut and I'll show you. And you need green onions, sesame oil, and soy sauce. We're going to uh, go over this step by step and this is just for the for the pot sticker filling and then we're going to go over how to how I do pot stickers again I'm I'm not professional but this is all about flavor uh, not about appearance all right so we're going to do this based on based on flavor and, and getting it done the easiest way possible all right so I'm going to start with getting all of my green onion cut and then I'm going to come back for the um, we're going to start, we're going to go to the ginger and then we'll start everything off. Okay. So green onion, you want to make sure nice and fresh, nice and clean. We're going to use a whole bunch of green onion, one bunch. Okay. I like to cut off the ends first. That gives me a clear way through cutting. Okay. So we got that done and taken care of. Now we're just going to thinly slice all of this green onion okay so all right now this part we're going to use in the filling this part here the nice green stuff we're going to use for the dipping sauce okay so I have a food processor if you don't want to use a food processor you don't have to I just like the consistency that I get by using a food processor when I'm making the filling again the food processor part is not a uh, hundred percent necessary it is just for my personal uh, preference You get to the end you want to be very careful don't cut your fingers all right I'm gonna put that to the side for now ginger how much ginger to use it really depends on your flavor profile in the actual filling I don't like to use a whole lot so I'm going to cut out what I'm not going to need I got a good knuckles worth of, uh, of ginger take my peeler carefully going to peel the outer skin off So now we got a nice piece of ginger. Okay. This is going to the food processor, so I don't have to get it too fine. But if you're not going to do a food processor, you can get a pre graded ginger in the stores. 
uh, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, we're not professionals here. Uh, we're not going to uh, be getting a you know uh, James Beard award here. This is not what we're going for. This is elementary cooking. So you would just, if you want to do it by hand, get into small little sticks over here, and then small little chop. Okay, that's really what you need in terms of size if you wanna if you wanna do this by hand. If you have a food processor, great. I still recommend you cutting it down to smaller pieces just to get a wider distribution of the ginger so you don't have big pieces of ginger or you know parts of the of the uh, you know parts of the just a lot of ginger in certain parts okay you want to make sure the filling is fully mixed up and integrated garlic how much garlic should I use, Uncle Danny? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. I would uh, use as much as you want. I would say three to four pieces if you're not big in garlic. I love garlic. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that. And again, you, if you don't have a garlic press and you're not using a garlic, uh, or you're not using a food processor, you're just gonna chop it up. All right, easy peasy, one, two, three Zs. I'm using food processor so I'm just gonna get that all in there all right like I said I'm using ground beef so I'm just going to get the ground beef and try to evenly separate it around my food processor there there we go and now we're gonna add the cabbage. Again, how much cabbage you wanna put in there? You wanna put in a cabbage is an integral part of this. Uh, it does uh, add flavor, texture, and it is a necessary part. Um, you know, at least a cup per pound of meat. But that is just a at this point, that is just a uh, a guesstimate. Okay. What I do is I just fill up my little food processor there. All right. Now, I like using so uh, sesame oil. It gives a really good flavor, and it just ties everything together. Gives it that nice uh, Asian Asian kick. Uh, soy sauce. Use your preferred soy sauce. I'm putting in approximately half a teaspoon to half a tablespoon of the oil and approximately four tablespoons of soy sauce. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is if you're doing this by hand, you're gonna mix it up by hand. Make sure you get a good mix. You know, let it stay to the side, okay? All right, so. I now have a nice good mix of product, okay? Now, we're going to, at this point, I'm gonna let it sit for a little while, try to combine the flavors a little bit, and then we're gonna move on to the, to the dipping sauce. All right, for the dipping sauce, I like to use the rice vinegar, sesame oil, green onions, more ginger, more garlic. Okay, we're going to go through it real quick. For the sauce itself, we don't need a lot of ginger. So I'm going to cut off a nice half knuckle of a piece. I'll get that nice and peeled up. Okay. Now the dipping sauce really needs to sit for a little while. You want to do this pretty early in the game. 
And the reason I say it wants to set is because you're adding all of these elements and you're adding the acidity of the rice vinegar. And the acidity of the rice vinegar is going to start to break down uh, some of these components a little bit, releasing their oils and flavors. So you definitely want to give it some time to sit so that it can really just uh, get a good flavor on there, okay? Now, I'm mean, again, it's the same concept, okay? I'm not doing it in a food processor. I'm doing this by hand. So, again, we want to make sure that we're just getting nice, small little pieces. Now, you're really probably not going to get much of the solids when you dip, but it's really for the flavor. So, you can keep it big, or you can cut it up small. The smaller you get it, the more surface there is surface area is the larger the surface area the the uh, more release of the flavor now if you're cutting ginger and you've never cut ginger I got to tell you it is very fibrous and it is not the easiest to cut you want to have a nice sharp knife and after you've cut the ginger, I would say resharpen the knife. Because it doesn't particularly dull it, but it is a very fibrous component that does take away from some of the sheen. I'm just going to use a little bit of garlic here. Now here in this household, we use pot stickers as a nice little appetizer when we are doing uh, more Asian themed meals. Um, don't, uh... All right, now we got the three ingredients in there. As you're well aware, soy sauce is very salty so we are not adding additional salt to the stuff that we're putting the soy sauce in because it brings its own sodium with there all right so at least at least a quarter cup of soy sauce and at least a quarter cup of rice vinegar now here's the thing this is very important you're going to mix it and then you're gonna let it sit. And then in a little while, you're gonna give it a little try. And, oh, forgot one thing. Tablespoon of the sesame oil. There you go. You're gonna give it a little try in a little bit. And if it's too salty or doesn't have enough acidity, you're going to add a little bit more soy sauce or vinegar or oil. Whatever it is that your flavor profile uh, that you prefer all right now we're going to go into the main part you want to make sure you have everything prepared you're going to need some kind of surface i use a sheet pan with a uh, parchment paper i sprinkle in some flour real little bit here but we don't want it to sticking to whatever sur surface you put it to okay i get the wonton wraps okay i don't do it myself you need the meat the wonton wraps and an egg wash for those who have not done an egg wash before you crack the egg i always use a little pinch of salt in this case a tad bit of water and whisk it all up does not have to be perfect, it just has to be doable. All right. Got my egg wash, my meat, my wontons. Now I use a pastry brush. You may not have a pastry brush. 
guess what? It doesn't matter. You don't need it. I use it. It makes my life simple. I will show you how to do it without the egg wash. Oh, and with, no, I'm sorry. Without the brush. And I'll show you how to do it with the brush. All right. We're going to open up our wraps. Okay. Now, the people who do this all the time, they are they're amazing. Um, much more amazing than I am. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they have this down. I don't do this often enough to have a really good um, technique on this. I'm going to show you what I do because this is what um, this is what you're going to be able to do. Okay, guess what? Finger. You're going to finger paint. Yay! I like to finger paint. You want to stay within the lines. It doesn't really matter if you do or not. Okay. And so so what I did was I painted the egg wash onto the edges of that of that uh of that wrap why i like to use the brush is because i can get much wider longer using less egg wash and it takes me less time there you go again there's people out there who are going to do this much better than i will i'm not the amazing uh most amazing at this a little spoonful I use a little teaspoon, a little spoonful, and then there's a way that they wrap it. It makes it look beautiful. I don't have that technique. I don't know the technique. Um, so I just do a triangle. So basically I put the filling in the middle and I fold it diagonally, bring the two edges together, and I pinch it shot is it traditional no is it the best looking no is it tasty yes and that's what we want tasty and so we're going to go through all of this and get it all filled and then we're going to go into how to cook okay so now we have our multiple pot stickers done we're ready to we're ready for the next step we've taste tested the sauce the sauce is good we've got the pot stickers filled that's good we're going to go and put a pan on the oven on the stove top uh medium high heat get some oil in there now there's two ways to do pot stickers you can do a pot sticker which is going to be pan seared and then steamed in the pan or you can do a pan full of oil and you can fry them and so it would be fried wonton. Uh, I'm going to show you the pan seared, the pot sticker itself, but like I said if you want to fry it you just fill up the pan with some hot oil and then you would fry it on both sides and you would have fried wontons. And this, the the cabbage, the ginger, the onion, all that, if you want to add crab meat or shrimp or something like that for wonton, for fried wonton, it's the same thing, just instead of using meat, use the, use the crab or the shellfish meat that you want to use. We're going to wait until the pan gets nice and hot. I'm going to cook off three right now for you guys. And then after that is done, once these are complete, you then put them on a plate and you dip them in the sauce and eat them and it's that easy that good we want to make sure that the the, the, the oil is hot okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wait a little bit longer here make sure it's nice and hot and then we're gonna put it in So I just dipped the edge in there. It didn't start to fry up. So I know that the oil still needs to heat up a little bit more. And we're waiting. We'll miss you, Alex Trebek. All right, here we go.
When putting anything into a frying pan of oil, you put the side down and you push away from you. So if there is a splatter, it splatters away from you, not onto you. Trust me, I learned this the hard way. We're gonna let those sear up a little bit. The goal on this is to get them uh, nice and golden crispy on one side. And then we'll flip them over to the other side. They don't take a long time. You can see it's starting to brown up already. Alright, and boom. And shebang. Kerpow. Alright, you see how they're nice and golden brown? Alright, we're gonna let these get nice and golden brown on the other side. Now, we're going to put in a quarter cup of water, cover it up, and bring the temperature down to medium. Now, as, woo, as you can see, this pot lid is not the pot lid for this frying pan. If you have one for the frying pan, great. If you don't have one, you want to use something that's bigger than the pan so that it covers it up. We want to try to get as much steam in there as possible. Now, those big pops you're hearing is actually the water and the oil creating a... Uh, you know, when you have boiling water and hot oil, you create a bit of a mess there. That's also why we want to have the pot lid on there as soon as you put the water on. So that if there is a pop, it is going to go right into the pan. You're not going to get splattered with it. So the popping is done. We got a good sizzle going on over here. We really are not going to do this for a very long time. What we're doing right now is we're just steaming it, making sure that the uh, the center has been has been fully cooked, and we're softening up that uh, cooked shell now. So it's going to go from crispy to nice and soft. It's going to have that caramelized flavor. You can see they're nice and soft. And ready to go. Alright. Now you would just continue to repeat this if you're making a lot. You continue to repeat this. You're going to let that, that water is cooking off. You could add a little bit more oil and then make sure everything is hot and just start the process again. And there you go, pot stickers, ready to be dipped in some sauce, and enjoy.